Well, good morning. It's, uh, it's an honor to be here to share with you, and I'm so glad we left the dancing with Joseph because it would be ugly if I was doing that. Uh, it is my uh, privilege to be here with you, not so much as an expert today, but I guess I'm here as someone along the journey of getting kids back outside. And uh, today I hope to share some strategies and tips and also some encouragement and uh, all the appreciation that I have for each of the roles that you play in our larger movement here to get students back outside. So my official role is an eighth grade science teacher, but in the summertime, my wife and I are summer camp directors. So we work with little kids in the summertime and taking little kids outside is pretty easy. They're closer to the ground. They're naturally <laughs> curious. Older kids, yeah, not so much. It can be kind of a challenge to get eighth graders uh, back into the outdoors. Um, you know, especially in the community where I teach. Uh, New Albany, it's a great place to be, but lots of neighborhood restrictions, like Richard Lube talks about. I've had students in the past tell me that they've built tree forts and things in their backyard, and they're so excited to share that, only to have them removed by neighborhood associations and, and other organizations that want to keep the, the neighborhoods nice and neat. We also have the challenge of disconnecting students from their electronics. Uh, just this week, I took my students outside to our nature preserve, and I'm getting all excited, and the kid raises his hand, can I take out my iPod? No, not at all. So, uh, so oh yeah, they really do go on whether you like it or not. <laughs> anyway, so one way that I get kids outside and, and, and entice them outdoors is to create high interest events, such as a simulated UFO crash. <laughs> so in this, in this scene, you see a kid investigating the crash, uh, but they don't know that they're learning math and science along the way. And that's kind of one of the themes I wanted to share with you this morning is the official curriculum that teachers cover and then kind of our hidden curriculum. Uh, official curriculum, you know, is, is science and geology and biology, but our hidden curriculum, at least at New Albany, is to teach students to be environmental stewards. Okay, sorry, yeah, this is kind of nerve wracking. <laughs> it's kind of fun too. So for example, one of the skills that we work on is mapping. Something we could definitely do inside, one of our skills that we need to teach, but it's a lot more fun to go outside to learn how to draw a map to their adopted area. Each of our students does have a nature area that they adopt through the school year, and we use that for all sorts of connections to the official science curriculum. But here, you probably wouldn't know that the student's learning about physics, about energy transformations, as she uh, enjoys some time here under the solar panels. Now, other practical issues, we still have the ooh factor of the, uh, oh my gosh, we're going outside and we're going to get West Nile and rabies and all that kind of stuff. But it's kind of fun. Once you get them out there and let them play a little bit, uh, it's kind of like Calvin here. They discover that, yeah, the outdoors really can be cool, uh, especially when they unplug. Other things you have to do, you have to be flexible and creative. When you don't dress appropriately to, uh, to be outside, yeah, we got to pinch hit and keep your feet dry. We've also uh, taken steps to give students time to just play. Even during that structured time event within the school day, uh, students have time to explore the area that they've adopted on our school campus. Here, a student is creating the world's smallest national park. So she has a piece of string, one meter long, and they have to create four points of interest. And, you know, I have the big burly eighth grade boys full of, you know, testosterone, they're down there making a boat ride in the little puddle with the lake, you know? It's, it's really kind of cute. Not a word you use with uh, middle schoolers very often. We also give them time to, uh, to debate and wrestle with those larger issues of judgment and ethics. In this activity, they're trying to decide which item has the most value. Not in terms of monetary value, but in terms of the ecosystem or beauty or other characteristics. Um, kind of back to the practical issues of Dressing appropriately. You know, middle schoolers, they're always hot. Middle of winter, they're wearing jeans and t-shirts. But we kind of learn that nature has its own consequences. We, we go outside whether you're prepared or not. Now, I do pro provide the extra clothes, things of that sort to help, them, to help them enjoy the time outside in any season. And it's really amazing for my students to see the change of seasons over time. Uh, you know, they always kind of ask, well, we're not going to go out in the snow, are we? I said, that's the best time to go out. And kind of a funny story, we went outside one year, and all my students kind of stayed clustered around me, and I couldn't figure out what they were doing. 
they literally couldn't find their way back to their spot that they had adopted and been to all fall. And they, they told me that someone had cut down and come out and cut down all the grass. So we had to do, you know, do an impromptu lesson on what really happens in the wintertime. We also integrate other content areas. Students here are enjoying a reading from Otto Leopold. You know, Leopold's readings mean a lot more when you're sitting around, huddled around a campfire in the outdoors. What are the results of all this? You know, we have some natural curiosity and wonder. Um, right after that reading where, you know, teachers have the best laid plans, the student asks about how light is being reflected in the ice. And nothing else we had taught that day mattered to him, but he was most curious about that. Other results of, of getting students back outside, uh, we find that students are calmer, more focused. This particular trip, uh, these students, this was a field trip down to the Hocking Hills, some of these students have literally traveled the world. And we were sitting on the edge of a cliff, and I was like, we're going to lose their attention here. We need to move on. One of them said, can I just sit here? I've never heard it this quiet before. And this student had traveled the world. And finally, another story, uh, a student of mine, she couldn't get to her adopted area because it was flooded because of the rain, and she had flip-flops on. And Mr. Flory, my feet are going to get muddy. I said, OK, they'll wash. And so for the first time in her life, she stood there and squished mud between her toes. And the look on her face was just incredible. So that was my very scattered, nerve-wracked presentation <laughs> about what we do. So <laughs> thank you very much.